So, Robin, with tears in his eyes, put his hands in his face, and shaking his head, his face turning red, said, Pastor, I don't know what to do. My kids are out of control. My wife is out of control. And I have no answers. And so meeting with him that day made me see for the first time that the devil wants to live in your home. Uh, we're on part two today about the devil wanting to live in your home and how we can make it difficult or kick him out. I like how Kay said, I didn't even think about this, but he's been kicked out of heaven because of who he is and what he does. Why would we want him to live in our homes? Uh, we want a home that is glorious. Some people say home should be like heaven. The best that we can. We don't want him living in our homes. Yet there are things that we say, things that we do that invite him in. We live a certain way where he can, if you see the picture, he can actually have a recliner with popcorn and a pop enjoying himself in our home. We don't want that in our homes. We read Ephesians chapter 5 verses 21 through 6-2 is what I read about how we can kick him out or keep him uncomfortable in our homes. We don't want the, ha the happy devil in our home feeling comfortable there. And I spoke and we took very, took several meetings with Robin to talk about the issues in his home. And this is where I came up with this, what I talk about today and the problem in his home. See if any of these things sound familiar to you and what you need to work on in your home or even strengthen or get better. Even a very good, strong home needs to do better. The devil looks for any angle, any weakness, any little crack to wiggle into. We always have to be on guard, no matter how good it may be. I remember last year I said, I told everybody that Kay and I were going to a marriage conference and they say, everybody said, you guys have problems? No, that's why we go. So we won't. The Bible's great at reminding us and we need to look over and keep striving to do better, to be better. But how to keep him uncomfortable. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter four, verse 27, neither give place to the devil. Don't have a place for him in your home. Not a foot, uh, they call it a foothold, but I like to say a room. Don't have a place for him in your home. Make him feel uncomfortable when he comes in. Don't let him be happy that he's in your home. We're going to talk about what I helped rob him with in his home. Uh, it turned out good in the end. We're talking for a while, though, didn't look like it. Submission is the condition for the devil to flee your home. Many people quote the scripture, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. They forget the beginning. Submit yourselves unto God. Then. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So submission is the condition for the devil to flee your life or to flee you. The devil, listen to me, the devil does not fear you. He doesn't. I'm going to tell this story that's going to tell on myself. But uh, and I don't know why I thought of this, but he doesn't fear you. When I was younger, you may not believe this. But I had a bully. You know, somebody would beat me up. Uh, you remember seeing the old TV shows where 
give him your lunch money or give him your milk money or they'll beat you up. And that's what he did. I either had to give him my money or he beat me up. His name was Jojo Wilson. I still remember him, redhead kid, beat me up. Believe it or not, big old strong me, I had a bully. One day, I don't know why, coming home, he, he beat me up and stole my school pictures. Now, why he wanted pictures of me, I don't know. It just blew me away. But he wanted my, he stole them. I went home and I told my mom, and mom says, that's it, I'm walking to you to school and we're gonna get this fixed. So that morning, we walked to school. Now, most mornings, I would walk and I kept waiting because I never knew where Jojo was going to jump out. It'd be the bushes. It'd be over. I mean, sometimes I thought I almost made it because I had to cross that road. And, and I thought, wow, I'm not going to get beat up today. And then all of a sudden, there he was. And so I was constantly looking for him, afraid of him, always in fear. But this morning, my mom was going to walk with me. Anybody thought I walked in fear then? What had changed? Who was walking behind me? I'm almost hollering for him. Come on, Jojo. Come on out, buddy. Come on. And I could walk with confidence and strength and a smile on my face. I wanted him to jump out. Not because of me, but because who was behind me. She would take care of that. That's what we need in our homes and our lives. The devil is not afraid of you. He can beat you up good. But he is afraid of the one who walks behind you. That's why we submit to the Lord. Because we want him to have our back. And so when the devil sees that and says, I can't touch that person. I can't get to them. I can't beat them up. I can't be their bully because they have the Lord behind them. And so that's what we need. We read in James chapter four, verses six to seven. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and it makes it easier to resist him, because who's behind me? Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. A submitted family is a glorious family. We read in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27, how Jesus wants to present his church as a glorious church. We want to present our family as, as a glorious family, an example of what God can do in a family, an example of what God can do in a marriage, an example of what God can do with children. But that takes submission. Now, as soon as you start on that, I remember one time on a Wednesday night, we were studying the book of Ephesians, which is my favorite book, and we got to this part and two ladies just went off as soon as I mentioned submission. And they had a big long speech of why they didn't have to submit to their husbands because they were not worthy. They didn't earn it. And I remember saying then and I say now, your submission has nothing to do with whether they earned it or not. Your responsibility is to submit. Men will say uh, that uh, they can't love their wives because of what they've done or what they've said. And again, I'll say this. Nowhere does it say there are any conditions to it or whether they're worthy. It just says what? Love your wives. What Robin and I had to work on was Robin. Was Robin. His, his kids wouldn't listen to him. His wife had no respect for him. Did whatever they did. It was a, a, a marriage out of control. And Robin wanted me to fix them. I had a lady one time 
come in, uh, a lady and a man, and they wanted to talk to me about their marriage. They sat down. Her first words were, fix him. Fix him. Wow. How about you fix you? Husbands, love your wives. I'm getting right into the sermon way too fast here. Lo love your wives, whether they're worthy of it or not. Whether you deem it worthy or not, love them. Wives, submit to your husbands, whether you think they're worth submitting to or not. Do what you're supposed to do. If you want change in people's lives, you must be an example of that change. Because you can't yell and scream and manipulate people into change. I know for a fact you can't do that to a man. You start manipulating him and yelling and screaming at him. And whatever it is he's doing, that's what I'm going to do. You're not going to get me to change. So submission and a submitted family is a glorious family. Each person is to submit to God. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Can I boil that down to be submitted to me? If you want to be my disciple, submit to me. We see Jesus give us the three key actions to submission when we talk about submission and biblical submission we're talking about these three things if you get nothing else in the sermon and and i preach too long and you kind of lose me or you'd start dozing off justin uh <laughs> get these three things that jesus taught us about submission and apply them to your life and in your family, and your home, and your spouse. First of all, he said, deny himself. That takes humility. Can I say, humble yourself to your spouse. Ephesians chapter uh, 6, I think it is. 4, yeah, chapter 4 says at the very beginning, wars come, fightings come among you because of your own lusts, your own desires. Deny yourself. If you get into a marriage thinking about what this person can bring to you, thinking about what this person can do for you, you're going to be miserable. Because that's not what a marriage is. A better marriage is, I deny myself and I'm submitting to you. My, your desires, your wants, your needs are now mine. And I'm submitting to you. I'm denying myself. It's a wonderful thing to see that work. I remember a, a lady in my church in Brownstown. She was older much older, uh, she, they got, her and her husband both got saved in their early 80s. And I remember baptizing him. That was something. She was fine. It was him. He, 80-some years old, he did not want me to take him down. She told me the story about when she was a child. And mom would fix dinner, and they were a household of like 10 or 11. It was a big family. And she would make dinner, but she never saw her mom make a plate for herself. Now, she knew mom was eating, but she never saw mom make a plate for herself. So one day, you know, they're supposed to go up and get ready for bed, whatever, after eating. And they all went upstairs to get ready. And she said, I'm going to see what mom does. So she snuck back down real quick and started looking through the, you know, the, the little post through the staircase. And as mom was cleaning up the table... She would take the scraps, the leftover food, and put them on a plate, and that's what she ate. Because she wanted to make sure her children ate first. That's what we're talking about. Deny thyself. Always was a memory that she never forgot, because her mother denied herself. 
and made sure her children ate first. When you deny yourself, you're there for them. It's not come home and say, woman, where's my food? Why is there not dinner ready? It's come in and said, have you had anything to eat? Are you hungry? Deny thyself. Remember when I, Kay and I first got married and uh, she was all excited about being married and, and all that. And, and every time I turn around, she, I said, I'm thirsty. And she'd just go run and do it. And eventually I said, Kay, I didn't marry a slave. I can go get my own stuff. <laughs> it's okay. I can go do that. But the willingness to deny when we submit to Jesus, that's what he wants from us. Our relationship with God is an example of our relationship with each other. And, and you can read on. I, I'm hitting, I'm just skimming the top of this topic today. We can get deeper and we will get deeper as we start our new ministry, Living uh, Better Together. Next month, it's going to be a family ministry. And we'll get deeper into these things. I'm just skimming the top. But it's Jesus and our relationship with him and God is an example of our relationship with each other. And our relationship with each other is an example to others of our relationship with God. See how this all goes? Deny yourself. Service, that's take up your cross. Every person that's a Christian and wants to be a disciple of Christ must serve him. A ministry. We talked a little bit about that Wednesday night, uh, about how God wants us to serve him. If you're married, serve your spouse. Minister to your spouse. Minister and serve your children. Not that they're the rulers, but serve them. Serve. Take up your cross. Your first ministry. Now, God has a ministry for everyone, and I think everyone in the church should be involved in a ministry. I really do. But your first ministry is your family. The first ones that you're going to serve and reach out to is your family. As a husband, your first ministry is your wife. And as a wife, your first ministry is your husband. The first you're going to minister to is your wife and husband and family. Serve. And then follow me. It actually means in the Greek there, unity. Unify. See, that was part of the problem. In his family, it was not unified. It was not structured right. There was no unity. There was no following God. There was no following Christ. Therefore, there was no following each other. There's a structure to a family. And uh, I see my time. I want to hit some things. I'm not going to go through all of this, I don't think. There's a structure to a family, just like a structure to the church. And that's why a family, a marriage, and a family is an example of the church, and the church is an example to a family. And there's a certain structure to it that God expects us to be. The, the husband is the head of the house. He's the leader. The wife submits to his leadership. And the children submit to the parents. That's the structure. Without that structure, you have chaos. Let me say, you have yelling, you have screaming, you have fights, you have people throw things. You have people throwing fits. You have the police called. Because there's no structure in that home. There's no unity. I'll do what I want. Had a heard a lady one time at break when I was working in the factory. 
And she said, no man would ever, no man will ever treat me that way. So what way? To tell me what to do. I'm me. I said, you're not going to last long in that marriage, are you? There's no unity. No unity. So let's go over the submission as a family. First of all, each person in that family should submit to God. Okay? Submit to God. Love God. Submit yourself to Him. Serve Him. Deny yourself when it comes to God. Have a ministry. Listen to me. If you're reading your Bible every day, having prayer time every day, going to church as often as you can, and submit yourself to do good works to help others, you're on your way to submitting your life to God. It takes humility to do these things, by the way. And if you could do those things with God, that's what we're looking for when we're talking about our families. A family must submit to God first, each person. A family submitted to each other. It says in Ephesians 5, 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God and respect of God. But I looked this word up. A lot of times when you see fear of God, it means respect. It actually means this time afraid of God. Some people say you shouldn't be afraid of God. You better well be. Anybody who can bring fire down from heaven and destroy a whole city. You should be afraid of that. In fear of God, submit yourselves one to another because God says, I am not pleased with that. Now, there's stuff in the Bible that says that his wrath waxed hot. I don't know what that is. I don't want to know what it is. I never want to experience. I don't want God so angry with me. His wrath waxed hot. One of the greatest ways to make sure that he is not pleased with me is not submitting to others. In my family. A lot of people uh, like, a lot of men, like the question about submitting and submission and, and talking about submitting and, and even point at their wives and say, you're supposed to submit to me. And, and I've heard all those things. You know, her problem is, is she just won't submit. We're supposed to submit one to each other. One to each other. Let's look at it. I have the husbands first because we always seem to linger in the women. And I think this should be come first. I really do. The rest of it falls easier. If a man submits to his wife in love, the Bible says a husband is supposed to submit to his wife. Ephesians 5, 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and did what? And gave himself for it. That takes humility. That takes denying yourself. Jesus Christ he humbled himself. The Bible says he became lower than the angels because of his love for us. The creator of the world Submitted himself to us to save us from our sins. If a man submits to his wife in love, I truly believe the rest of it falls in line. You're the leader of the home. You're the example of how we're supposed to treat each other. And if you don't treat mom right, the kids aren't going to treat you right. And they're not going to treat mom right. They're not going to treat each other right. Don't think they don't hear how you talk to mom. You talk down to her. You belittle her. They hear that. Submit to your wife in love. He gave his life for us. 
If you read on in that chapter, it explains a little more, but this is the bottom line. Men, give your life to your wife. Give your wife to your wife. Well, she yells at me all the time and she nags me all the time. Love her and give yourself to her. I'm telling you, you're not going to yell her out of it. You can yell and scream all you want. It ain't going to work. But love will. And giving yourself to her will. Now we're talking about Satan and he likes to be in our home. There is no better home that he loves that one that's yelling and screaming and hollering and fighting and, and, and one is angry all the time and, or the other one's angry or the kids are angry and he's just sitting back and saying, Whew, I'm loving this. This is the best movie I know. Do you, can you imagine the devil being down one day and he's kind of depressed and he said, I know what, I'm going to go to the Smith house because there's always something good going on there. It's not what you want. And it all starts, I totally believe this, it all starts on how dad loves mom. If dad loves mom like he's supposed to and give himself to her, submitting to her in love, concerned about her, serving her, treating her right, being tender-hearted and kind and loving, the rest of it, I believe, usually falls right in line. We talk all the time about the submission of the wife. What about the submission of the husband? What a grave responsibility. If you cannot submit to a woman in love and give up yourself for her, don't get married. You do not have to get married. I tell that to people all the time. You don't have to get married. But if you do, give yourself to her. I wrote this down yesterday. Uh, you say, I do. You get these vows and you, in the end you say what? I do. And then after you get married, you never do again. You said I do, but you do nothing again. Serve your wife. Submit to her in love. Deny yourself for her. Then it says a wife is to submit to her husband. Ephesians 5, 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. We could get onto what that own husbands means. I could keep on going, but I'm running out of time. But this is it means is to submit to your husband as the head of the house. One of the things that I think I can tell this. I don't like to give away a lot of things. But when Kay and I first got married, Kay is a very independent, strong woman. Do you know what we struggled with at first? Kay being an independent, strong woman. I married her for that. I love her for that. I never want that to go away. But there is that issue. I've known of women to go out. I know one woman who went out and bought a home with her own credit on her own and come back and told the husband, we're moving in 30 days. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's not a submissive wife. Listen, I'm going to read this to you because I want to get it in. When we talk about submission, this, I think, this is from Focus in the Family. I think this explains it and tells it in the best way of what I'm trying to say. Submission may be a lot of things, but it is not what the world makes it out to be. It is becoming a team. A team that has different talents and gifts, but nonetheless, a team. It's a relationship with one that's lifting up each other and blending with each other in the fluid, everyday family moments. It means working together in the blending of beauty and grace of submission to create a unified front 
and presenting that to the world. That's what we mean by submission. See, sometimes, a lot of times, the woman may be a little smarter than you. That gets difficult, doesn't it? But we're a team. Don't, as a man, realize when she is smarter than you and let her maybe take the lead on this kind of thing. In our house, it's the finances. I know she's smarter than me on that. I know 13 years she took care of herself. She saved up thousands of dollars. And in those 13 years when she was on her own and, and I was doing other things, I got into thousands of dollars of debt. So who do you think is smarter with money? But we're a team, right? You take care of the finances. Let me know what's going on, but you take. We're a team, but that takes submission sometimes, a lot of times. To submit to each other. To create a unified front to the world and to Satan. You have no place in our home. We're submitted to each other. We're submitted to God. We're in this together. Remember one time dad was and I were talking and there was something going on. And, and I told dad, well, you know, we're all in the same boat together. And he goes, yeah, but it has a lot of leaks. <laughs> all right. So plug those leaks. So it doesn't go down a unified front. To the world as an example of what a Christian home is an example to your children of what a Christian home is. It's not yelling and screaming. It's not forcing people to do things. It takes talking. It talks. It takes prayer. It takes change. It takes love. To become unified. Wives, submit to your husband. Then the Bible tells us that children are submit to their parents. Ephesians chapter six, verses one and two. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, respect. Now, listen to me. You're not going to beat that into them. Don't get me wrong. I believe the Bible says spare the rod, spoil the child. There's punishment. I'm going to tell a little story. Dad doesn't even know this. I hate giving away family secrets. Mom one time gathered us kids together. She had a belt. And she says, I can't make you guys respect me, but I can make you fear me. And she beat us with a belt. By the way, as I grew older, she didn't get either one. Respect or fear. You're not going to beat your children to respect you. That's not what spanking is about. It's not about respecting you. Do you know how you're going to get your children to honor and respect you? One, how you treat each other. As a married couple. Two, respect and honor them. Yeah, our children are to obey us and submit in obedience. But we're not to provoke them to anger. Respect and honor them. One of the ways is to realize that every child is different. Every child is different. If you ever coached any kind of sports team, you'll know that every child is different. They're at different levels, different talents, different skills. There's different ways to approach them there. You'll find out real quick. Some children, you can yell at them and they'll get it and they'll go. Another child you yell at and you've lost them. <clears throat> they'll just go inside themselves. But all of them respond to respect. Every child responds to respect. Well, I yelled at them enough. I've thrown them around. I've beaten them enough. Why are they not submitting? 
because that will always lead to rebellion. But respect and love is completely different. Satan loves it. Satan loves it when we use violence. I'm not saying correction. Correct your children. Believe me, I believe in that. Ask my children if I believe in that. They'll tell you. But he, Satan loves violence. Don't slap and hit your children out of anger. I remember one time we were coming home from school and uh, mom was not pleased with our grades. And she went off. But all she could ever talk about is how we're embarrassing her. Embarrassing her. Nothing about, is there anything going on? Is there something I need to know? Nothing about being respectful. A submitted family is a glorious family. We're to submit to each other. Here's some words for submission and I'll be done. One, humility. Be a humble person. Two, following. We got to follow the leader. Our first leader is God. It's Jesus Christ. The next leader of the home is the, is the father. And sometimes that might mean mom and dad have to work out some differences before dad comes up with a rule. Or this is the direction we're going. But you've got a unified front together and we're following dad's lead. Faithfulness, being faithful to God is so important and being faithful even when we don't understand what he's doing or what he's done in our lives. Same thing in a marriage. She might be a wild heart. She might be yelling and screaming, but I'm going to be faithful to her. No matter how she treats me, no matter what she says, I'm going to be faithful. Now, we all know what I'm talking about being faithful. I'm not going to look for somebody else outside the marriage. I'm going to be faithful to her or I'm going to be faithful to him. Faithfulness takes uh, submission. Obedience. Obey. Now, here's the thing. That even means husbands. Husbands. Part of submission is obeying. What do you mean, Michael? Well, we have this rule in our house. OK, one, I'm the leader of the home. But she's the leader of the house. And we can go to Proverbs 31 and show that if you want me to. And so when she says, I want the dishes rinsed before they go into the sink. Guess what I have to obey? If I love her and I and I want her happy with me. And if I want, you know, her to be happy with me so I can get some things that I want. And you know what I'm talking about. I got to rinse the dishes. Now, Kay, I, I may, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. She basically washes the dishes before she puts them in the dishwasher. I'm almost like, so what does the dishwasher do? It washes the I guess. <laughs> me, dirty know. dish, it goes right into the dishwasher. Makes no sense to me. But that's her rule. And I obey it. I obey it. If she wants me to take my shoes off before I get into a house, I could say, I'm the man. I'll do what I want. You'll be the man and be alone. Take your stinking shoes off before you get into the house. There's a certain amount of obedience. See, I told you we could go on with this. Service. Serve each other. Serve God. Serve each other. Respect. Respect each other. Honor each other. Love. Love. Structure and unity. Always seek unity. Blessed are the peacemakers. Even in our homes. Even in our homes. Always be willing to compromise. Except for morals. Except for ethics. But always be willing to compromise. For your home. Let's not let the devil have a place in our homes. And how that happens is we submit to each other in love, in humility. We deny ourselves. We serve each other. 
and we're unified as a family. The devil hates that. And you guess what? Whatever he hates, I think that's what I want to be. That's what I want to be.